Welcome to the Smart Couple Show and podcast. This is an Ask Me Anything episode, and I've got a question queued up from Alex in California, and I think this is a good one. So we here at the Smart Couple strive to help you in your relationship life, particularly your long-term relationship life, and... You know, if you want to do a relationship well, you both need to work on that and do it well. It's, I, I repeat myself a lot there, and it's because I continue to get questions. My partner won't blank. Um, translation is my partner won't pull their weight. It's, you know, it's not going to work out, guys. Uh, Alex from Sacramento, California, asks... Since a boundary of mine is about to be breached again, does that spell the end of this particular partnership? If I'm standing in my power and fully honoring my needs, the answer to that question is yes. So he's already answering his own question. Okay, it's good, good information, but check out the backstory here. Backstory is I've been lying to myself and my partner about my okayness with her quarterly seven plus day adventures with a supposedly platonic friend of hers. It took almost a year to figure that out and come to a place of acceptance with it. Last night during a semi-routine check-in conversation, I was finally able to be honest with myself and with her that these trips, which started after she and I began seeing each other just over a year ago, are not okay with me to the point of them being non-negotiable. It turns out that I need my partner to have me as their primary adventure person. Nice. Um... In less than two weeks, my partner and this friend of hers are scheduled to embark on a nine-day climbing journey together. Okay, I'm assuming it's a male, or, you know, Alex is, is a both male and female name. So uh, I'm assuming it's the opposite gender of you, and that that's triggers some jealousy and some fear. And uh, you've gotten to the point of clarity where you're like, no, I'm not cool with this. And you're standing in what I call a non-negotiable need, okay? That's something I teach in all of my classes, and it's something essential in a relationship. Non-negotiable needs uh, are critical, and I help you clarify those in my courses, okay, and at the relationship school. A lot of people, just side note on needs, a lot of people will continue to disown their need in the relationship. And I have a friend who uh, is doing that now. Um, well, it's changing, but I'll just say a friend who's done that for a while, not owning uh, their needs in their partnership and trying to use spirituality uh, like, oh, that's like, I shouldn't need anything. I should just kind of be okay with myself over here. Look, if you want to be okay with yourself and you don't need anything from anyone, don't be in a long-term relationship. Be single. What's the point? You're in a relationship because you have needs. And your partner's job at times is to meet those needs. What's wrong with that? So many people are adverse to being needy and disowning it. I'm not needy. Oh, needy is so like bad and demonized. Um, and I'm calling major bullshit on that. You have needs. And look, we're all insecure in certain parts of our life. So where are you insecure? Well, you're insecure, Alex, um, about your partner going on a seven-day quarterly climbing trip, an adventure without you and with an, a partner who you feel, or a friend who you, you don't feel good about. It doesn't feel good to you. Like you're worried, you're concerned, you're afraid, you're insecure. So what? So good job speaking up for yourself. No, this doesn't work for me. Put your foot down. All right, this is a totally reasonable thing to ask. Look, this doesn't work for me. You can continue to go on these climbing trips, but uh, I'm not going to be in a relationship with you, you know? Um, and your partner might be rolling their eyes. Oh my God, you're so jealous or you're needy or that's your problem, you know? Um, understandable, but if we care about someone and we want a committed partnership, sometimes they're going to ask us to do things like not hang out with a certain friend because it makes them feel uncomfortable. They feel uncomfortable when we hang out with this friend and they feel really scared and insecure. 
you get to ask for what you need there. Mm, I need you to not go with this person. You can go on a climbing trip, but you can go on it with maybe the, the same sex partner, um, have a climbing partner that's your same sex. You can go with so-and-so. I'd feel better about that. Um, it sucks that I'm asking this of you because I have a big insecurity here and I'm going to work on that so that I'm cool trusting you going on this climbing trip someday, but I'm not there yet. Right now, I, I'm freaking out. It doesn't work for me. I need you to not do that. So be where you're at rather than where Jason says you should be or spirituality says you should be. Be where you're at, which is, God, I feel scared and jealous and I need you to not go to that party or hang out with that friend right now. Um, I lose my shit. And um, my goal is over time to be more confident and more secure here. Um, and, you know, that's what I'm working on. But for now, please don't, please don't go with that friend. You can ask for that, guys. Your partner doesn't have to agree, though. Like, this is the thing, you know. They can go, huh, okay. Do I want to support this person in their need and show up for them or do I not, in the way that they're asking me to, or do I not want to do that? And you get to feel into your own integrity and to see if that's something you're willing to offer the other person right now. Totally okay to do that, right? Yeah, and there's some times where, look, you, let's say, Alex, let's pretend for a minute, you have baggage around being cheated on and you have big trust issues from your childhood and you're asking your partner to not do, not basically live their life, uh, that's a little different example. So I don't want you, the listener here, to be thinking that I'm just pro-needs and uh, the other person just needs to, you know, bow down to your requests for needs um, to be met. I'm not saying that. I'm saying some of the time. And some of the time, it turns out the asker, let's pretend Alex in this case, had, did have a bunch of history around uh, feeling betrayed, uh, affairs, trust issues, parents, you know, childhood issues that contributed to deep mistrust. Alex is definitely, if Alex wants to get empowered, Alex is going to have to work on that over time and um, learn how to get more solid in the face of people maybe behaving in ways that don't work uh, or cross boundaries or whatever and like standing up for him or herself, right? Yeah. So, um, and then the other person can, if I'm in a relationship with Alex and that's out and, and I'm, I'm with you, Alex, I'm like, all right, uh, you have a lot of big trust issues. I want you to really work those. And for now, um, yeah, I'm willing to not go on the climbing trip. It's not a deal breaker for me to not go on the climbing trip. Like, um, when I, when I say I don't want to go on the climbing trip, I'm demonstrating that our relationship really is important to me and I'm willing to, to work on it for a while and see if we can find a, a win-win here. Because I could perceive it as win-lose. Like, okay, you, you're you asking me to go, not go on the climbing trip. You win, I lose. Uh, but that doesn't have to be how it plays out. If I'm Alex, I'm going to say, what would make this a win-win for you with my request? And I could say, hmm, well, I still want to go on climbing trips, so I don't want to give that up, but I cannot go with this particular person. I can find a new climbing partner. You know, That would be a good stretch for me. And then I need to link it to what I care about in life. So, well, finding a new climbing partner would be good for me because I tend to not put myself out there and meet new people. I always, I always go with the same old people all the time. And so this would stretch me. And I'm trying to do that in my work. I'm trying to stretch myself and meet new people at work and move up in my company or whatever. So, yeah, this, this could actually help me grow. Right? See what I just did there? Like, we need to see how um, Alex's request is going to help me in my compass and what I care about in life and, and the true north that I'm headed toward in my life. If I see it as an obstacle, or we're going to keep fighting about it and the relationship may not work out. Okay, so this is, this is workable, but you, Alex, it's not workable for you if your behave, partner's behavior doesn't change there. And then for them, that may not be workable for them. And then, yeah, you move on. Like, it's okay. <laughs> it's really okay, guys, to, to end a relationship and um, treat it as practice. And that was a good learning experience. And I'm going to apply the lessons I learned here going into the next relationship. I'm going to be more upfront and clear because what Alex owned there was that 
uh, he was basically saying this was okay with me when it wasn't. Right? That's what a lot of people do because they don't want to lose relationship. I don't want to lose this love. I don't want to lose this partner because it's so great. But I have to betray myself to keep them? Fuck no. Don't do that. Okay? All right. Awesome, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me here. And if there's any questions in the Monogamy Smart Couple group, I'll take them now. Uh, but that's, that's a wrap on that. Now, if you want practice with this kind of thing, being true to yourself all the time, then you join the Relationship School Roots community where you get to practice owning your needs and standing up for yourself. And you get every other week a call with me and uh, Jennifer Morrison, one of my coaches, who will help you. And we will um, help you stand in your truth and your integrity in the face of family members and partner who's, you know, asking you to be different or, or you're like just scared to be you. Okay. You keep betraying yourself and your truth. Okay. You need practice. Okay. You can't just listen to one podcast and be like, okay, I got it. Right. Our nervous system is wired. You know, you've, you've trained this partner for years. So it's going to take a little bit of training, a little bit of practice to get strong here. All right. So jasongaddis.com slash roots, uh, will get you practice. And that community is vibrant and kicks ass because we, we're taking it to the next level, okay? Uh, 